Uh, as Melissa already mentioned, the reason we decided to also have a study on social cohesion is that obviously when refugees are joining a society that is already quite vulnerable, we may expect some tensions, some refugees being perceived as a threat, or even some resentment towards NGOs since they are helping the refugees, while there are also so many needy locals. And so in general, we might be afraid of some social conflict. And this is actually quite surprisingly a very understudied uh, topic in this context. So we see quite a lot of studies on the impact of immigration in the Western context. Western society is basically being afraid of the social effect of refugees, of uh, immigration in general. But the research that has been done in, a, in the African context on the effects of immigration or refugees mostly tends to focus on the economic impact or environmental impact. And even the few studies that we do have tend to be uh, qualitative in nature. So a lot of the evidence we have is quite anecdotal. So we found it important to have a study that is based on large-scale quantitative data and really focuses on specific specifically social cohesion outcomes in an African context. So our research question is how the presence of Congolese refugees are linked to different outcomes related to social cohesion in uh, Rwanda communities. Um, but this social cohesion doesn't really have a universal concept. It's usually approached with different indicators um, of a healthy society, for example, um, inclusiveness, cooperation, in general positive relations and trust in the community members, and it's obviously the basis of a well-functioning well society. And so this is what we did in our study as well, is um, we look at three different types of indicators. First, we get subjective safety, so how it's perceived um, from the locals themselves. Uh, then we look at their social networks, uh, the participation in uh, organizations, formal social networks and informal social networks. And finally, we look at different trust indicators, uh, such as trust in their own community, trust towards refugees, and towards NGOs. And we used mixed methods as, well, we start with the survey already mentioned by Craig and Melissa, but focusing on that local population now. And we sort of have a fuller picture, including the lived experience of locals. We also look at focus group discussions and uh, we also had a community-based survey, but this was more limited, so I will focus more on the survey and the focus group discussion today. So, uh, with the theoretical background, there is really no theory for the effect of refugees on social cohesion. What we do have is an American theory on how a sudden increase in diversity will affect um, local society, this is Putnam's hunkering down thesis, which is based on the assumption that an increase in diversity will cause inhabitants to withdraw from society, trust less, have less social networks in general, so a general negative effect at first. Although he, and he doesn't really talk about what happens over a longer period of time, but he knows that the attitudes might change. Um, so as I mentioned, the previous research is quite limited. And also, even the results that we do have are quite mixed. So for safety, for obje objective safety is usually looked at. Well, we look at uh, the perceived safety of locals. And so some of the previous results include increased threats from some studies that were carried out in Africa, but all the other studies in the same context find no effect. Or another common finding is that they effect the increased safety threat is not really due to the presence of refugees, but just the proximity to conflict. And then with social networks, again, we see that the literature is very, very much focused on developed countries, um, where we see, again, mixed results, uh, but often, for example, the migrant stock in the long term ends up having a positive effect on social networks. And uh, this is opposed to some very anecdotal evidence from Africa, where in general studies are missing. Uh, there we, see, we saw uh, in this one study a negative impact of refugees. And then finally, with trust, um, previous findings are again mixed, but one of them has found no negative effects of uh, diversity on general trust. So this is opposed to the theory that we use. Um, yes, and while there is uh, some evidence, as already mentioned previously, 
that NGOs might spark resentment since the effect is mixed for locals. Some of them sort of envy the refugees for getting more benefits, others see the source of employment. So, um, yes, so some strategy was already explained by Craig. Basically, what we do is compare uh, communities that are farther away and closer to refugee camps to see if there is a distance in social cohesion outcomes. Um, we work with a sample of 933 local households. Uh, the three areas behind the refugee camps are evenly represented, as are the different um, groups in terms of clo being closer versus farther away from the refugee camp. And yeah, as I mentioned, our main variable of interest is the proximity to the refugee camp. And in the original study, we include camp specific effects of proximity, but today I will more focus on general effects. And yes, as I mentioned, we use logistic progressions to analyze these effects, but also some of them from focus group discussions to interpret our results. Um, so these are our outcomes of interest. Uh, we measure, as I mentioned, subjective safety. They're all dummies in the regressions. Uh, most of them transform from scales. So we see, uh, do they feel safe in the community? Are they a member of any organization membership? Which is uh, defined as formal networks. Do they have anyone to count on for sudden financial help, which, is, which counts as informal social networks? And finally, um, how much do they trust their own community? How much do they trust refugees and NGOs? So as a first look at our results, uh, we look at the descriptive differences. Here we can already see that the differences between the two groups, so the short distance communities versus long distance communities, are barely existent. It's the only one, the only outcome where we see a pretty significant difference, a 10 percentage point difference is the, having an informal network for assistance, but for the rest, it's pretty balanced. In general, indicators are quite high. So for a better understanding, we, uh, we transform this to logistic regressions, uh, including a list of controls, so basic uh, background and socioeconomic controls, such as uh, the gender of the respondent, and some information about the household, socioeconomic status, how big is the household, and which one is the closest refugee camp. And yes, here we see, look at the first line, that is the, the overall effect of living in the proximity of a refugee camp. Although I have to note that these are only, uh, the data is cross-section, so we can't really claim causality, we see associations. Still, we see that there are really no notable differences in terms of subjective safety for communities that are further versus, uh, closer to a refugee camp, same for formal networks. And the one where we do see an effect, uh, a significant effect, is having an informal network for assistance again. Yeah, that's um, and yeah, we see some uh, significant differences also for uh, proximities to specific refugee camps, but these in the end, these even each other out when we look at the overall effect. This general uh, lack of conflict uh, was also confirmed by the focus group discussions. As this one uh, person mentioned, the only issue we have here is poverty. And we don't have a problem with refugees, or sometimes they mentioned that they initially had some problems of stealing, but this has been resolved by now. I won't talk about the controls now. So our second group of outcomes is the ones relating to trust. And here again, we see really no significant differences. We see no effect for living closer to a refugee camp. Doesn't uh, have a negative effect on people's trust in their own community, or even their trust towards refugees or NGOs. And again, this was also supported. We saw the same thing in the focus group discussions. People were saying that in the beginning, there was some fear, some suspicions, they thought they had witchcraft powers, but by now, they've really become one community, they don't fear them anymore, and they have commercial relations with them. Controls. Um, so yeah, to summarize the results, we looked at how uh, communities at a, at a different distance from refugee camp, how their social cohesion outcome differed, and we saw that they didn't really show different outcomes. They 
Desmond's over 5 positive in general, and even more positive in one case, in the case of informal networks. So residing at a shorter distance or refugee camp doesn't decrease uh, social cohesion outcomes in the community, based on our data. And in terms of policy, we really have two main takeaways here. The first is that hosts and refugees mostly have a peaceful relationship. And the second one is that the work of international organizations on the behalf of refugees was not a sort of resentment, as you may have imagined. So to better understand and interpret these uh, policy findings, we have a look again at focus group discussions. And for the first one, the peaceful relations between the host and refugees, uh, we see three factors that seem to explain it based on the focus group discussion. So the first one is sort of a given in this context, the cultural proximity between the two groups, the refugees um, and the locals. And this obviously helps reduce tensions to begin with. Uh, the second one, which is quite interesting, was time. So what we saw quite often is that in the beginning we had some conflict, some suspicion, but that over time, because it's a very uh, refugee situation, uh, these conflicts sort of resolve themselves. And the third is the most interesting in terms of policy is the positive role of economic interaction. We sort of um, show that here, for example, uh, uh, the participants said that since we shared the production, we work together. Uh, this helped the bond between the refugee and the local person. We see each other you know, as co-workers. So we see this as evidence that integrative refugee policy that we see in Rwanda, that they allow people to participate in the local economy, can really help build relations as opposed to increasing them by mixing people more. And secondly, uh, which was also quite interesting, is we were wondering why NGOs are received so positively when you could have, you may expect um, some sort of resentment. Uh, something that came up a lot was that uh, local respondents said that they connected uh, refugees being supported to better security. So they said that when refugees are not supported, uh, they might turn to stealing or begging because they have no other solution. And the locals as well, they feel safer and they have less problems with refugees when they are well treated. And so locals actually support NGOs providing aid to refugees because it leads to an overall um, safer, better environment for them as well. So it's interesting to see that the continued support for refugees is also important from a social cohesion perspective for locals. And I'll skip this now. So overall, uh, we interpreted the findings of our study as evidence that even in such an environment with very limited resources, an integrative pol uh, refugee policy, one that allows locals to mix with refugees, can actually lead to better results, especially over time. To bring these two groups closer and create a bond between them, and it doesn't have to necessarily bring negative social cohesion effects. Thank you.